This is a game changer for Shopify theme page building in the theme editor. Here's Bozi, your Shopify developer freelancer from Germany with three years of experience. My clients often want full flexibility with the customization of their theme and me as a developer always have to build a lot of custom sections to fulfill their needs. Until now. Shopify released theme blocks a while ago and if you don't know what theme blocks are, I got you. In this video, I'm gonna show you what theme blocks are, how to use them and what to keep in mind while using them. So keep watching because in the end I'm gonna show you what crazy stuff you can do with theme blocks by building our own page builder inside a theme. Your clients will love that. Let's jump right in. Let me first explain what theme blocks are. If we jump in our theme in the editor and go to our default product template, we can see that we have the product information here and the product information has blocks. These are section blocks. So basically you can just create or delete blocks. So for example, you can add a text block in here. You can also like move around these blocks. These section blocks are bound to the section though. So you cannot use the title, the text block, the buy buttons anywhere else in the theme, just on the product information. Theme blocks on the other hand, you can use everywhere in the theme depending on how you set them up. So let me show you. I opened the code editor with my theme and also the documentation. If you don't know how to get the theme in the code editor on your local machine, watch my video about the Shopify CLI and I'm gonna show you. The documentation states that we have to add a blocks folder. So if we look at the architecture of the theme, we can see these files and now we can add another folder to it. So let's add a folder called blocks. To create a block now, we can simply do this. Just create a new file and let's call this text.liquid. In this block, we can now simply write the markup for the block. Let's just copy this from the example. And as you can see, this is just like a basic diff with block settings text inside of it and also an alignment option, block settings alignment. So where is this coming from, this data? To set the settings for the block, we can do the same thing as in sections. We can write a schema for it. We can just copy this again from here. And as you can see, it's the same schema as for sections as I said, with the name, settings, presets, etc, etc. I'm just gonna change this to text though for better showing purposes. Now let's see what happens. We first can start our Shopify development server and let's go to the editor. How do we get the block now inside of the theme? Theme blocks can only be used in sections that are specifically made for theme blocks. So let's go ahead and create a new section. Let's call this theme blocks liquid. So I created this section now with just like a really basic schema with a name and a preset. To use theme blocks in sections, we first have to define the block setting. And to use theme blocks, we simply have to put the type of at theme. Additionally, we can also put the type of at app in case there are any apps that want to use the theme blocks inside of this section. To fully display the theme blocks now, we can use the content for blocks tag. So let's copy this and put it in here. If we go back to the editor now again, we can add the theme block section and inside of the theme block section, we can now add blocks. And here we can find the text block that we defined before. And here we can also change the words and also the alignment. Okay, I also added the styling option. So now this also works. So these are the complete basics on how to use theme blocks but now comes the cool part we are also able to nest blocks inside of theme blocks and how can we do that if we go back to our text block we can also define block settings inside of the block schema so if we go ahead and put a block setting with the type of add theme inside of the block schema we can also use blocks and as we learned before we can just output these blocks with the content for tag and call these Blocks, so the content for blocks. If we go back to the editor now, we can see that we have our section, our block, and now we can add another block inside of the block, and another block inside of the block, and another block inside the block, and another block inside of the block. So we can do this a total of eight times. Later in the video, I'm gonna show you how we can manipulate this to get really cool results. In the next step, I'm gonna show you how to restrict the theme blocks usage or give permissions to theme blocks to be used in different sections. <music> To show you how to give sections the permission to only use specific blocks, I created another block that is called button and a button block section. Since the theme block section that we created in the first step has the type of add theme, we can basically use any block that we created. So we have the text block and we can also add the button block. So we have both. 
Let's go into a new section, the button block section and go into the block settings. To give the button block section the possibility of only adding the button blocks, we can go ahead and put a type of button. Only the type of the name of the section that we want to use. If we go ahead and add our button block section now, we can see that we can only use the button block. But we can extend this and say we also want to use the type of text. So both again. And now we can see that we have both blocks to use again. This comes in pretty handy when you want to use only specific blocks instead of sections. But what if you want to restrict specific theme blocks from being used everywhere? In this case, we can use private blocks. To show you what private blocks can do, I created a new block again that is called image liquid and also a new section that is called image only. To make a block private now, we just do the following. We go ahead and rename the block so that it has an underscore before it. What this does basically is it excludes the block from the add theme type of block. As you remember, we put the block setting of type add theme inside of our theme block section. And if we go to our theme blocks, we can see that we do not have the image block because we privatized it. If we go into our image only section now into the block settings, we can define a type of underscore image to just use the image block. If we go ahead and add our image only section and want to add a block, we can only use the image block, but we cannot use any other block. Now you can use all blocks, specific blocks, or even restrict blocks from being used in sections. So this gives a lot of layout flexibility. In the next step, I want to show you what static blocks can do. To show you what static blocks can do, I created yet another section called slideshow blocks. So what exactly is the advantage of static blocks when you can just like use dynamically rendered blocks and put them wherever you want? Static blocks are specifically useful in layout decisions because the main thing about it is you can conditional rendering these. What do I mean by this? In my example, I have a slideshow with blocks. So when there are more than two blocks, more than two image blocks, for example, you want to create a pagination. So like a show more button or something like that. And how we can do this is we can again use the content for tag, but in this time it's not blocks, it's just blocks and then we can define the type is in our case the button and really important we have to give a specific unique ID we can call this pagination so as the documentation states the type and the ID is required so a unique identifier for the block if we go to the editor again and add our slideshow block section, we can see that there's a button block, but it is hidden and there's a little lock. And if we click on it, it says visible if certain conditions are met. Since we know the condition, so it is more than three blocks, let's try it out. Let's add two image blocks and the button is still not showing. But if we add more than two, the button is automatically rendered now. If we remove one image again, you will see that the button disappears again. As you maybe noticed, we can only add blocks above the button block. This has something to do with the hierarchy in the code because we first put the content for the general blocks above the actual content for the specific button block. We can also just put this below the button block and as you can see now the block comes first, the button block, and then we can add other blocks below it. So always keep in mind that the hierarchy in which the content for tags appear in the code, that's defining how you can add blocks to the section. Static blocks so a really nice tool for specific layout decisions, so keep that in mind and get creative. In the last step, I want to show you how to use dynamic sources inside of theme blocks. This can get a little bit confusing, so bear with me. Imagine you are on a product page and add a block with a product setting, but there's also the product on the parent template or even the product setting on a parent block or a parent section. So where's the product object now coming from? To show the theme block which data to use, we can use the closest object. So the theme block will first use a product setting within itself. If its own product setting is not there, then it will be using a parent's block product setting. If that's not there, then it will be using a section setting of the type product. And if that's not there, it will use the parent's object. To show you this scenario, I created some more sections and blocks. So I created a product display section that will just render the content for block. 
with a type of cart. So I also created a cart block, a price block for the product price, a product image block, and we use the text block for the product title. Then in the product display section, I just render the content for block with a type of cart, and I say the closest product is the section settings product. I do the same thing in the cart block where I say content for blocks, and the closest product is the block settings product of its own settings. And in the price and product image and text blocks, I just render the block settings of the product settings of its own block. We put all the closest product tags inside of the section and the blocks. And if we go now ahead and want to add the section, so the product display, we can see that the current product is displayed. Why is that? Because if we go now, for example, to the product image block, it says we use the closest product source. If we go one step higher to the card block it says it also uses the closest product so we go one step higher to the section and the section also says use the closest product now we are just using the templates product object we can also break this now by going ahead and say the product display the product we want to select another product for example the snowboard as you can see all the adjacent children of the section now use the closest product of the section because we define it here. We can also go one step further and say we change the setting of the parent theme block. So we just select another product and now since we broke the cycle in here the product image the text and the product price use the closest product so the parent theme block as a section now the children blocks of the parent block since they use all the closest product source use now the cards product setting they go up the hierarchy and when they find something so the block the section or the parent block they just use this the closest product also is a dynamic source so we want to, when we replace this we can also see that it, we can use the closest product, the current section product or the template product inside of the block. But the section itself, if we want to replace the dynamic source, we can only use the templates product because it's above it. I hope you could understand a little bit more about the closest object. And like I said, this is a little bit confusing, but I think this will be a huge potential for future theme building using the closest object. This is not only possible for products, we can also use collections, articles, blocks, pages, and even meta objects. So this is crazy. And now for the fun parts. Let's go a little bit crazy and build our own page builder inside of the theme editor. Let's build our own page builder. I went ahead and deleted all of the other stuff again and kept our theme block section. And this theme block section still has the content for blocks, so nothing fancy. What I created now is a container block and this is where all the magic is happening. So basically a container block is just like a normal diff basically that renders the content for blocks itself. So all of the blocks that are in the block setting. We also put the add theme. The cool thing is I added a lot of layout settings. So for example, what the display type is, grid flex, layout direction, row column, justify content, align content, etc, etc. That's basically everything it does. It just contents all the other blocks with a lot of layout settings. And these settings I put in a style tag to get applied to the container itself. Then I created some more blocks, for example, the heading and stuff. If we add the theme block section now, we can see we have all of these things. Let me show you now what we can build with this simple container add-on. So there you have it an image with text sections just built with theme blocks. Basically what the container block is doing, it just contains stuff. And with all these style options, you can build crazy sections just with three or four components. Let me show you another example. And a new section, a logo list section, just with the four theme blocks that we have. I added just the theme block section and some containers and all the components inside of it and created a whole new section without any coding at all. I mean, I coded it beforehand, but now your client can just use these components to build whatever they want. The next cool thing is you can also save these settings as presets. So the client doesn't even have to put the settings in manually. If we go ahead, and pull the editor settings that we just created. 
we can go in here and just copy the block settings. Of course, we have to clean up this a little bit. I think you get the idea. I just copied all the settings and put it as a preset. And then I renamed the preset to image with text blocks. If we go to our editor now and want to add a section, we can see that this section is already pre-built now in the sections. We can just add it and it's there now without putting all the settings into it. This is crazy. With just one section, you can basically build an infinite amount of sections yourself and your clients will love you for that. To give you the roadmap again, just build a section that just renders the blocks inside of it and give it the add theme type of block. Then build all the theme blocks as components. But the most important part is the container block with all the style settings, etc. Keep in mind though, Shopify is working on flag sections that will do exactly this. There will be new editor type settings with which you can pretty much build all the layout you want. So yeah, keep that in mind before you build something that this will come in the future. Now you have all the tools to get creative with theme blocks and make your clients happy. Since this was a lot of information, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. Also, I would be really happy if you would subscribe to my channel because I put a lot of work in these videos and I want to try to help you get better at Shopify development. Also, don't forget to join my Discord channel where I build a whole community around Shopify developers and helping each other out. See you next time, my nerds. Bye-bye.